Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning. We give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield Clark County area or looking for new church home, you must be in St. John, your new church home. This being the celebration of our Lord's Supper, all of the services in your bulletin except for the hymns and for the order of confession and forgiveness, which I will now ask that you turn to, page 94 in the front of the red hymnal. And I invite those who came without difficulty to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are active to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you without word and deed, by what we have done. And by what we have left done, we have not looked into our war, we have not looked our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and us, so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. The mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, therefore declare the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now begin our worship with Jesus Calls Us Over the Tumult. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. This hymn was written by a woman, Mrs. Cecil Francis Alexander. She uses the name Cecil Francis Alexander, but she leaves off the Mrs. It's actually written by a woman. She was a songwriter in Ireland, wrote this as part of her hymn books, and it was written in the 1800s. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia. This is our 1030 service. Our 8 o'clock service is at the drive-in, Melody Cruise Inn. This is the 17th of August, 2014. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Johnson will be leading this, the reading of these scriptures. Sunday after Pentecost, the theme is Teach Us to Love the World. Our first reading this morning is from the old prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter, beginning with the first verse and then verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of freedom. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my heart, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks 
Sveika. We will sing responsibly Psalm 67. Joe Brewer is leading us. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. And as the 
disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their mouths. So then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. You may be seated. A couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, quickly, first of all, a reminder that August 31st will be the last drive in service. That will be our annual pet blessing. Uh, so on September 7th, both services will be back at the sanctuary. And of course, many of those that you're used to seeing and visiting the service will rejoin us as they can be going to the drive in all summer. Uh, also, September 7th is Rally Day, beginning of Sunday school. So we hope you make plans for that. Uh, there will be a meeting planning for the rally day in Sunday school for that oh, coming yeah. here tomorrow at noon in the lounge on the office floor, the administrative floor. And September 2nd, BBW at Leonardo's, all women are invited uh, to join uh, Joe Brewer is playing special music. Our pastor is Pastor Pollock. Harvey Baker is one of the assistants today. Listen to Joe Brewer's special music.
barking dog. We've all had experience with barking dogs. I've had dogs in my life. And you, your dog don't even know that dogs bark when their security is threatened. It means another animal is coming into their territory or they hear someone they don't recognize. And sometimes your dog has a bark is bigger than its bite. Other times you have a dog like we used to have that we had put down a couple of years ago whose bite was ever bit as big as her bark. And if you tried to come into the house or tried to come near me when I was walking her, she would lunge at you and show her teeth and snarl and tell you that you weren't invited to enter our space. I had a friend, or we had a friend when I was growing up who had beetles. He had them in a pen outside in the backyard. And one day after supper, there was a knock on the door, and they're standing on the porch with a deputy sheriff giving him papers that he was being sued by his neighbor because his beetles barked too much at night. The only problem was the week that the suit said that they were barking and really bothered the neighbor, the dogs were in a kennel 10 miles away. So he either had really sensitive hearing or he messed up pretty bad. Well, barking dogs don't just refer to people. Oftentimes the term barking dogs is used to describe people who are persistent in wanting something. We can use the phrase in talking about the hundreds thousands of patients who come to our shore each year wanting part of the American dream, wanting to flee the poverty of their island, which is one of the most impoverished places on earth. We can use the term to respond to the hungry throughout the world as they clamor for food because they have none due to famine or war or for whatever reason. The poor could be called barking dogs as they cry out to us in their need, for their need for basic essentials. Those who are victims of abuse, whether it's mental abuse or physical abuse, cry out to us uh, just as a dog barking in the night. And then we could even say that the term could apply to those thousands upon thousands of our brothers and sisters in Christ in Iraq and Syria who are fleeing the atrocious conduct of ISIS, the Islamic militants who wish to set up a caliphate in which no one who is not Muslim, the way they see Islam, will be allowed to live. In our gospel lesson for today, we have an example of a barking dog. Now to set the tone, we have to go back and think what has been going on with Jesus it all began back in chapter 13 when Jesus learned of the beheading of John the Baptist. Once he learned of that, Jesus wants to go off by himself, spend some time alone with his father, because he knows that with the beheading of John the Baptist, that means now all attention will be focused on Jesus, and his passion is that much closer to becoming a reality. So Jesus sent the disciples off trying to go up into the mountains uh, by himself, but the people learned of it. They ran across the lake and showed up where Jesus was and they were trying to have some quiet meditation. Jesus heals their sick, and as we read, it became late. People were hungry. Jesus had compassion on them. He challenges the disciples, give them something to eat. The disciples say, Lord, we don't have anything but five loaves and two fish. Let's send them off. Send them home. Jesus won't do that because he knows they'll pass out and possibly become victor, uh, victims of thieves and robbers. So he blesses the five loaves and two fish and twelve baskets that are collected afterwards as they feed over five thousand people. So then Jesus dismisses the crowd and sends the disciples off in the boat. And they, Jesus prays, the early morning comes, the wind is blowing, the boat had made much progress. Jesus comes walking down the water. The disciples think he's a ghost. Peter said, Jesus says, it's I. And Peter says, if it's really you, Lord, bid me come to you. And Jesus says, come. Peter steps out of the boat, starts walking toward Jesus, but he gets distracted by the wind and the waves, begins to sink, sink into the ocean, and, or into the sea, and cries out, Lord, help me. And of course, Jesus saves him, and they get in the boat, and they sail to the other side. Well, now, Having come to the other side of the lake, the disciples were eating and they had to wash their hands. This was a big ritual violation in Judaism of Jesus' day. You never ate anything without washing your hands. It was a ritual worship. And so the Pharisees began to 
violation of this very unnecessary law that was created in the centuries after Moses got the law and the covenant. So they didn't meet our gospel lesson on this today, when Jesus talked about how if nothing that goes in you defiles you, that goes out of the sewer, what defiles you is what comes out of your heart. And that your heart is the seed of idolatry and hatred and greed and uh, fornication and adultery and all the other sins that we commit. So then, once again, after finishing that fight, Jesus wants to evidently go off and be alone. And he ventures out of Galilee and into what is modern-day Lebanon, which at that time was known as Phoenicia. He goes to the area of the cities of Tyre and Sidon, the land of the Canaanites, the ancient ancestral enemies of Israel. Now, scholars can't figure out why Jesus went into Tyre, the region of Tyre and Sidon. As we look at Jesus' earthly ministry, he didn't venture into predominantly Gentile areas too often. He'd go to Galilee and Samaria where there were Gentiles as well as Jews, but not an area so pagan as Tyre and Sidon. So they enter and immediately comes this barking dog in the form of a Canaanite mother. A mother who is distraught because her daughter is afflicted by a horrible being. And the woman cries out to Jesus for mercy. As we go back and look at our gospel lesson for today, that last half, we read, The woman of Cana from that region came to him and cried out, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. Thy daughter is severely demon-possessed. Demon the word of mercy.
So the disciples probably were filled with contempt for this woman and tired that she continued to persist in calling after Jesus and screaming after him. And then when Jesus says, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if the Pharisees heard that one, they would have blown a gasp. Because who was he talking about the life of lost sheep of Israel? Israel was God's chosen people. Israel was the one who God had made a covenant with. So how could they be lost? Especially when you understand what this word lost means. It means uh, to be ruined, to be perishing, to be destroyed. So Jesus is saying, I was sent on a mission, or I was set apart to go to the children of Israel who are perishing, who are being destroyed, who are being ruined because of the false teachings of the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the high priests, the Levites, and everybody else connected with the former religion of Judaism in Jesus' day. So Jesus is telling a woman, woman, I want to send to help the Gentiles. My mission, the reason God sent me, was to reveal himself to the Jews because, as we hear St. Paul say time and time again, salvation comes from the Jews. So God sent Jesus first to the Jews to reveal that he indeed was the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. Now we can see Jesus interact with Gentiles every now and then. There's the centurion who served the heals. There's the rich young ruler who served the heals. But he simply stated to this Canaanite woman, I've got to do my duty. I've got to do what I was sent to do. But she will not quit. We then read, she came in and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. That word worship is also translated in other places in the New Testament as to kneel. So she kneels in reverent worship of Jesus. She's down on her knees with her face to the ground, worshiping Jesus and still crying out, Lord, help me. The word help means to relieve someone or to give them an aid. This woman is persistent. Just like a little dog would be persistent when it wants to play with some there or want your attention and even as they grow older when Missy our lad stuck, became older she would come and sit by Gina or myself and we would reach down and pet her and stop petting her and she would stand up come over and put her head under our, our hand and flip it up and she wanted some more pets we weren't done yet she had a lot more attention she wanted well, that's what this woman's being like. Being like a dog that wants your attention. That won't let you go. So then Jesus says, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. This sounds pretty mean of Jesus. And over the centuries, there have been people who have tried to explain away the harshness of Jesus' words. We have people who say, oh, Jesus is just loving and kind and never was mean to anybody. And so we as a church should never be mean to anybody or never discipline anybody or ever confront somebody when they are being mean to others or whatever yet. Jesus had no problem confronting people when they were acting in a way that he found offensive. He never had any problem telling the Pharisees that they were blind guys, white horse tombs, vipers, snakes, whatever. He didn't have any trouble telling the rich young man that in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, he needed to sell everything he had and come follow him. And when the fellow turned around and walked away, Jesus didn't go running after him. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean my yoke to be so heavy for you. Hey, you don't have to sell everything, just sell a little bit of it. You want to enter the kingdom? You got to sell everything you have to follow. So Jesus says to the woman, it is not good. The word good here means it's not a fine thing, it's not an honest thing, it's not the right thing to do. It's not right to take children's food and throw it to the dogs. The imagery here, what Jesus is saying, is the children. 
children represent the Jews. And what he's saying, it's not right for me to take the gospel that they're to receive first and throw it to or give it to you pagans and ignore my responsibility to my own people. And so, although it sounds harsh, he was making a point that was very important. He was to go to the Jews first and then the Gentiles. And then the woman gives an answer that, I don't, that many scholars try to say Jesus was not expecting. And that is the woman says, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. What the woman is saying is, Lord, I recognize what you are saying. I recognize God's plan of salvation is to come to the Jews first. But just like little children sit at the table and eat and crumbs fall on the floor and their little dogs eat up the crumbs, I am willing to be under the table to take the crumbs, the leftovers of what you have to give. I am not asking for you to replace your Jewish people with me. I'm not asking you to receive all of theirs. All I want is the crumbs. Whatever is left over. This shows great humility by this woman. This shows a great spiritual insight. She recognizes Jesus as the Savior, the Son of God, the Redeemer of the world, and that she is willing to wait in line She's not demanding to be first. She recognizes that God's chosen people, the Jews, should receive a message first. But just let her sit under the table, pray under the table, and receive what blessings fall on the table after the children have eaten. The woman, by her answer, recognizes her need for a Savior. Not a Savior, the Savior, Jesus Christ. Compare that to some people today. The people today who think that the whole gospel message is a bunch of old wives' tales and nothing to believe. With all our technology, with all of our advances in civilization, with our abilities to communicate through texting and email and uh, Instagram and
the preacher was saying. The Canaanite woman understood. What was that? The Pharisees didn't, the scribes didn't, Caiaphas didn't. Pilate, for sure, didn't. But this Canaanite woman was a child possessed by him. Understands who Jesus is. And because of her great faith, we read Jesus says to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. That word great means to have utter assurance about something, a, a total, complete conviction about something. It means to be banking on something complete. But you put everything on this one thing. Jesus Christ is a Savior. That Jesus Christ death upon the cross pays the debt of sin and evil. That Jesus Christ has won for us a place in the kingdom of God if we simply believe <coughs> and have faith like this woman. So you see it pays off to be persistent. It pays off to continually ask of God. It pays to continually ask through Jesus Christ. And sometimes it pays to be a marking duck. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We will now sing when we come to you for a healing Lord hymn number 617 in the back of your church. Hymn number 617.
Helen Wallace says, communion is system. We'll have Holy Communion today. We believe that Jesus is present in the Holy Communion. That when we receive Holy Communion, we receive eternal life and love, and we're able to serve one another. Last week's sentence was 128. The flowers today are given by Phyllis and Jerry Cochran in loving memory of Dad and Sister's birthday. You can see the flowers in the front flowers on the chancel stands are to the glory of God. We thank you for watching us on YouTube. We're asking you to come at 10.30 service or at the drive-in service, Melody Cruz Inn. We will have uh, one more service and the last service will be the blessing of pets. We invite you to bring pets to the drive-in service. This will be the last service, Labor Day service of the drive-in service. Greg Nolte is our organist playing our organ. Christ is with us today. We invite you to virtually take Holy Communion with us. Receive the true body and true blood of Jesus Christ. We see now Helen Wallace who's coming forward to assist the pastor as 
communion assistant, Harvey Baker is the worship assistant, Rita was Phyllis Johnson, Janet Hogan, Sharon Leach are the ushers. Give us this day our daily bread, 
now sing the Agnus Dei and eat the Lamb of God. Coming forward to take Holy Communion, receive the true blood, the true body of Jesus Christ, eternal life, and union with Christ as He has promised. holy time when we receive the true body and true blood of Jesus Christ as he has promised we receive eternal life we're in union with him we accept his gift of love and died on the cross to save us from sins promised to be with us forever all through eternity by John Bodie in the 1800s, English hymn writer. I want to thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Turn in any, tune in anytime. You can Google us up, and then 
type in St. John's Lutheran Church Springfield, Ohio, and you can then click on any service you want. We're happy to bring you this service. Our church offers a Christian school program for ages 3 and 4, nursery and pre-K. You can call the school office, 325-4311. Tune in anytime. Thank you for joining us in our worship service this Lord's Day. I hope and I pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you this day and all your days. We will pray for you, pray for us, and our ministry on YouTube.